I think it's safe to say that Call of Duty is one of the biggest riddles in gaming, a series that seems to be just immune from financial failure, no matter what it does. Or is it? Today we're going to analyze its most recent entry, Infinite Warfare. It's time to look beyond the reviews and evaluate the actual analytics behind Infinite Warfare and Activision to answer the hard question, did it fail? The Call of Duty franchise is heading back to World War II with its next game, and I think a lot of people are pretty excited about that, to get back to the roots of where it all started. But prior to Infinite Warfare in 2016, we had Black Ops 3 the year before, Advanced Warfare in 2014, and prior to that we had Ghosts, probably the worst COD game ever made. We get a new Call of Duty game every year, and part of the fun for the community is just seeing what setting and period of time the new game will feature. A futuristic Call of Duty was first hinted at during an interview regarding Call of Duty Ghosts with Mark Rubin in 2013. And in April of 2016, photos of this new Call of Duty, titled Infinite Warfare, were leaked all over the internet. A few days later, the official reveal came in on May 2nd of 2016, around six months before the title was to be released. I think this day is never going to be forgotten in gaming. It's going to go down in history as the day people spoke out against Call of Duty. This trailer is the second most downvoted trailer ever to be released on YouTube, currently with 3.5 million downvotes out of a total of about 4 million. 86% of its viewers disliked this trailer. There's probably two reasons for this controversy, one being that players were just upset with the direction of the new Call of Duty games and the series as a whole, and two, because the trailer for Battlefield 1 released four days later and really just blew everybody away. So it was pretty clear that many people were going to be saving their money for Battlefield 1. However, Activision did try to counter this by offering a remastered version of COD 4 with every purchase of Infinite Warfare, as well as access to an exclusive beta open to only those who pre-ordered the game. There are currently no player counts that have been reported for this beta as far as I'm aware, and I'm to assume this is due to low participation rates. I'm suspect to believe this because Activision also opened up the second stage of the beta, running from October 21st to the 24th, to all PlayStation 4 owners, regardless if they pre-ordered the game or not. When Infinite Warfare hit the market, there was a very big disparity between the critics and the public. Currently, the average for critics is around a 76, and a 33 with users. And if you're wondering what the sales split looks like across the platforms, check this out. 97.5% of all Infinite Warfare copies were purchased on consoles. So why oh why is there such a big difference between user and press scores, and is this commonplace among the franchise? Here's a graph of the average press scores of every major Call of Duty game ever released. You'll see that the COD games are received well for the most part, and that the franchise peaked in the late 2000s with COD 4 and its follow-up. Overall, good ratings from the press. Now check out the average user score for the same games. This trend might be more indicative of how people really feel about Call of Duty, and honestly, long-standing franchises in general. As with the press, Users did agree that the series was at its best with Call of Duty 4, its fourth game, but then it went just downhill from there. We call this fatigue. It's when people become exposed to the same thing over and over and over, we get more and more and more tired of it as that exposure increases. We all know that donuts are fucking delicious, but it's been proven by science, the more you eat them, the less delicious they get with every donut. So why does it seem like the press is immune from this kind of fatigue, and why are their ratings so much higher than the average user? Regardless of its mixed reception, Infinite Warfare was the best-selling game of 2016, go figure. Yes, even Battlefield 1, Overwatch, or Final Fantasy XV couldn't compete with its awesomeness. However, it was reported in the two months following its release that the total sales for Infinite Warfare amounted to not even 50% of the sales of 2015's Black Ops 3. Activision blamed the setting as the reason players didn't resonate with the game. Although this was true for many, Infinite Warfare actually had a pretty decent story with a good amount of gameplay variety, but other than that, it just didn't change anything again. When your core gameplay loop is the same, in every single game you put out, it's no wonder that eventually, 
backlash is going to result. And this is reflected when looking at the player count. After just one short month, Infinite Warfare's average player count dropped 81% from around 11,000 concurrent players to just over 2,000. Now as of today, six months later, that drop has increased to over 91%. That's pretty insane, considering this game just came out this holiday season. Now it should be noted that 11,000 players for a new AAA online first person shooter in 2016 is very low, considering populations for other games like Battlefield 1 with 569,000 players at a peak and CSGO at 850,000. Now Infinite Warfare's viewer count is also interesting too. It currently has more people watching it than actually playing it, and that's not something you see every day. Activision's stock price took a serious hit as well when Infinite Warfare was released, and in the months to follow, dropping $6 per share in 12 days and 15% in total share value within one month, and continuing to stay low before stabilizing in mid-February. This is pretty surprising, seeing as how we see a lot of interest in video game stock during the Christmas season. Was this because Activision decided not to release Infinite Warfare on the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox 360? Was it because of the stock crisis of GameStop and the decline of physical game sales across the board? Or was it because people are just tired of Call of Duty? Whatever the case though, this data does suggest that Call of Duty is not immune from financial failure and they do have to step it up with their next version of their game. Do you guys agree with that statement or do you disagree? Let me know what you guys think of Infinite Warfare in this story down below. And thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed this video. By all means hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here for more of our future content. And you guys have a super duper kick ass day and we'll see you guys next time.